Welcome to our series of short educational videos which describes important concept of building performance. And this video tells us how the level of thermal comfort is assessed and uh, for conditioned as well as for naturally ventilated indoor spaces. Thermal comfort is actually a, a wide, wide field and there's been a lot of work and uh, so going through that, the most uh, effective way is to use a standard, a very recognized standard, uh, ASHRAE 55 standard. And we'll be using ASHRAE 55 in this, you know, presentation. So how the thermal comfort is uh, defined and uh, the title of the ASHRAE 55 standard is Thermal Environmental Condition for human occupancy. So ISHRAE 55 standard uses two types of thermal comfort assessment. One is for indoor spaces with mechanical cooling, so wherever we have an AC installed. And here we use uh, the method of predicted mean VOD, PMV, predicted mean VOD. And the other thermal comfort assessment is for indoor spaces with natural ventilation where we do not have mechanical cooling. And here we use the so-called adapt adaptive comfort method. Let's first look at the PMV method. Again, this is for air-conditioned buildings. And the predicted mean vote or PMV is a calculation method and metric of thermal comfort. And it is based on the sophisticated heat balance and experimental data. So there's a lot of science behind that. The second one is, again, like we said, that the PMV value can be applied to air-conditioned uh, buildings. That means buildings with mechanical cooling. And uh, the PMV, just in the basic sense, defines uh, seven scales of comfort level between plus three and minus three. In the middle, zero is neutral, so that means you can you neither feel a warm or cold. And going up is slightly warm, warm and hot, plus three is hot. On the other side, minus one, minus two, minus three, in determines the uh, uh, degree of increasing coldness. As we said, the PMV is a calculation method, and whenever we have a calculation method, we can calculate specific values. And we do this as follows. We have six parameters from one to six, metabolic rate, clothing, insulation, air temperature, radiant temperature, and which is actually mean radiant temperature, air speed, and humidity. And uh, we can use it, we could calculate by hand, it's very tedious, again, like a lot of very elaborate e equations, but there are some online tools which are very, very helpful. And here, one of which is very nice, it's the, from the center of the built environment, Berkeley, and you can see that the you can freely access the uh, access at uh, the uh, the link given below. So what you do, you enter the 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 values which we have for air temperature, mean radiant temperature, air speed, humidity, metabolic rate, and clothing levels, which you have to determine in accordance to ASHRAE 55. You enter it in, and you can use either. Uh, metric or, or, or imperial standards like Celsius or Fahrenheit and uh, so what if you do this you come up with a value and here for instance the PMV value is minus 20 uh, minus uh, uh, 0 0.21 and it is compliant it complies with ASHRAE 55 because it is in the range of acceptable PMV values which is between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. So we have uh, the value of the PMV, and the PMV then actually is used to uh, calculate a so called PPD, is predicted percentage of disqualified and disqual dissatisfied, sorry, dissatisfied occupants. And dissatisfied occupants means what is the percentage of the occupants who are dissatisfied with the thermal condition and for the uh, we cannot have something more than 10% because the PMV value 
uh, addresses so-called uh, the general comfort. There are other comfort, but uh, comfort measures for the uh, PMV, but we are not going into that. So w the PMV value has to be between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5 in order to have uh, a PPD value, which is 10% uh, or less. So if we have this, we are compliant with ASHRAE 55. So now we are going over to the adaptive comfort model. And uh, this model can be generally applied only to indoor spaces which do, uh, which do not have mechanical cooling system. And there are certain conditions, and we go through that. One is the adaptive comfort is based on the premise that outdoor climatic con uh, conditions affect indoor thermal comfort sen sensation. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll be speaking a little bit more about this. So the next one is, the higher the prevailing outdoor temperature humans can accept, uh, higher indoor operational temperature. So that means at higher outside prevailing temperature, it is said that the humans are getting adapted to the hot, to the warmer temperature, so they can they can have an acceptable uh, op comfort, uh, thermal comfort at a higher indoor operational temperatures. Then actually, the occupant must be free to control their clothing and uh, they have to be engaged in moderate physical activities, met 1 to 1.3, which is typically in office conditions. And again, like they, can, they should be free to control their clothing. Insulation means they, do, they don't have to be forced to have thick jackets or whatever in, in this kind of sense. And uh, the adaptive comfort model is based on statistics and defines ranges of probability within acceptable operative temperatures. So that actually means that, you know, it's not a big science behind that. There's much more statistics. There have been a lot of uh, buildings, naturally ventilated buildings, and uh, the results have been uh, put together and statistics performed. So we have come up or they have come up with ranges of probability. So this means uh, it is based on statistics and probability and not like the PMV on specific equations. There are two temperature uh, to determine a adaptive comfort. One is uh, the prevailing mean outdoor temperature. This means the mean air temperature over the past uh, 10 or 20 days. So what you do, you take the air, the average air temperature outside and over 10 or 20 uh, uh, days and average them. So you will actually, it's like uh, an average which, a filter which looks backwards. See, if you want to see it right now, you, you, you would like to have the prevailing mean outer temperature right now, you would have to go back 10 or 20 days. And that's defined by also by ASHRAE 55. And uh, you, can, you can choose your own uh, period which you think is, is appropriate. So again, prevailing mean, uh, at, uh, mean uh, outer temperature is looking back and determine what is the prevailing temperature outside. And the indoor operative temperature is uh, the mean of dry bulb temperature. So that's the air temperature and, and mean radiant temperature. So that's the operative temperature. So we see right now we get some kind of a correlation, the indoor temperature, operative temperature, and outdoor temperature. Be, you know, by the prevailing mean outdoor temperature, you get some kind of a linear uh, correlation there. And the linear correlation uh, creates some kind of a band, which we call the 80% compliance limit. You see this with the light blue. Inside is the 90% compliance limit, which is much more stringent, but in the ASHRAE 55, only the 80% compliance limit uh, is, uh, uh, is referred to. You only have to conform to the 80% compliance limit. Let's see how it works. So uh, here you have uh, our, our diagram again. Let's see, we have a, uh, a measurement and uh, we would have an operative temperature, which you measure inside. And you have from the 20 to 10 to 20 days looking backwards, you know the m prevailing mean outer temperature. So this one, it, it determines uh, a point, a data point. In our case, this one is outside of the 80% compliance limit, so it does not, it's not compliant with the uh, uh, ASHRAE 55 adaptive comfort model method. Same as for the next one, it's actually too low here. For the next ones, they are compliant because they are within the range. 
So uh, the adaptive comfort level only tells you whether or not you are inside of the acceptable limits or not. It does not give you a specific value. So this one was everything we wanted to discuss today. So we go over and uh, let's see how much you remember. And we always uh, present this as a self-learning assessment. And we have a couple of questions and, and we ask you to go through the question and try to answer them. Either look it up, it would be also great sometimes to speak to other people. And you, out of this discussion comes some, some wonderful learning experience. So the first one is, of our question is, describe two methods of calculating the thermal comfort in building with different space conditioning. The second one is, which of the two methods should be used in indoor spaces without mechanical cooling? The third one is, what is the range of acceptable PMV values? And the fourth is, why does the, ex uh, the adaptive comfort method use percent compliance ranges and not specific values? So we come to the end. We thank you very much for your interest and we would be happy to see you again for one of our other short videos. Thank you very much.